All righty then. Good morning, everybody. Once again, praise the Lord. This is Glory God into Ministry Sunday School. Bishop Garrett Bridgeworth is bringing forth the Sunday School lesson today. I have been doing this all month of May. Uh, amen. All month of May is pastoral month. And I've been seeing a, a slowness of attendance in the church. For some reason, it, the attendance is not as high as it used to be. Could we keep that door open? Yeah. For some reason, the attendance is not as high as it used to be in the church, and it's a lot of falling away. And I think it is because there's not many people teaching the Word of God like it needs to be taught so, you, so people can understand why they come to church. A lot of people come to church and not know why they come to church, and I believe Sunday school is where you are supposed to be teaching people or explaining to people why they come to church and what church is really all about. Mm -hmm. And many people get discouraged because they don't understand or they don't know, because that's the one. They don't know what's going on. Tell them, get the ice cups. Get them, please. Oh, right. And most people don't understand why. No, that's all right. We get it later. Just give me some more. Most people don't understand why uh, they're not getting the word of God like they should get it. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, you know, and then we got people thinking that their presentation is important when they come to church and come to realize God said he don't care how you are, come as you are. He don't care how you look. He wants you to come as you are. So many people worry about how they look and how they dress and they don't want to come to church. We had a young lady say, oh, I'm, I'm in my sandals and shorts. Jesus wore sandals too. It was hot in Jerusalem. You think he wore suits? He didn't have robes all the time. Sometimes he did, most times he did. But he wore sandals too. He was comfortable. He wanted he to be comfortable. You think when we're going to get into Sunday school that he fed the 5,000? You think he fed the 5,000 and they were hungry? I mean, and they, were, they were not comfortable? You think the 5,000 was all in suits, ties, robes, jewelry, hats? I mean, and it's ridiculous to people that. They come to church, they come to church and see everybody all dressed up in billion dollar hats. I mean, a person show themselves and look like, look like their clothes is $300, but you want me to take them an offering. Hmm. This is what Sunday school is about. You go to the church and the person is dressed up, look at every week, a new dress, a new hat, a new outfit, looking like they got $300 in clothing on, and you telling me you need money for a bill for the church. But nobody's explaining that. And the people look at that, they look at that. I mean, if you got three Cadillacs, here I am on welfare, and you want me to give my offering to you. That don't seem right. And this is why there's many falling away from the church because some of the leaders are not explaining how they got what they got. Like me, I got a job. So eventually I'm gonna buy some stuff because I got a job. But if you got leaders that don't have a job and they looking better than the congregation, something wrong. Yeah. And none of the congregation church money is going into the church, but the church still does the same thing years later. When they offering for a, a new uh, stereo set, a year later you still don't got the new stereo set. But what? Grab the other offers and donate you got. That's why people are discouraged. That's why people are leaving the church. But it should not be so because people need to understand during Sunday school you explain these things. Explain what it is that the church is doing. Explain why you're here. Explain why the church needs to come. Explain. And, and not just preach, preach, ha, 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 but teach. We're human beings. We want to learn too. You know? But most times, most people don't have nothing to teach. They don't have nothing to give. So all they can do is yell and hop and run and jump because they don't have nothing else. And it's sad because you're in leadership. People are looking up to you for guidance. That's what leaders do. They guide the sheep. They guide the church. But if you don't have nothing to guide them with, and you, like this Bible says, if the blind lead the blind, they both are going to fall into the ditch. Nobody can see, but you want to lead. And a lot of people are springing up with churches that aren't able to lead their home themselves. Remember last week we talked about homes? You got to be able to run your household before you go run the church. Your house running crazy, but you can't. Control that, but you want to come to church and control the, the way this service is. No, no, no. Priority starts at home. First, deal with your house before you can deal with God's house. But they're not teaching that in the church. So that people are being defeated because nobody's telling them you got to set your house in order. You know what I mean? If you want prayer, we can pray with your house. We can go and 
bring your, your family with the church and we can just talk a little bit about how we need to do the house to be in order because God moves at home first. You know? That's what church is about. Helping, supporting each other to understand a better way of living or a better way of seeing things. It's not always about jumping, shouting, dancing, and money. It's ridiculous what it turned into. It's all about help, helping, you know, giving people courage, giving people inspiration as well as information. Like my lady used to tell me, they got too much inspiration in the church and little information. It's the information that helps you, not the inspiration. The inspiration will inspire you to do, but if you got no information on what to do, then what's the point of being inspired if you don't know what to do? Right? So we need to teach what to do. So our Sunday school lesson is coming from Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. I mean, yeah, in verse 32. Then Jesus called his disciples unto him and said, I have compassion on the multitude because they continue with me now three days and have nothing to eat. And I will not send them away fasting lest they faint in the way. And his disciples said unto him, When should we have no should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? And Jesus said unto them, How many loaves have ye? And they said, Seven and a few little fishes. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave things and break them, and gave his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And they took up of the broken meat that was left, seven baskets, full. And they did eat. And they that did eat were 4,000 men besides women and children. And he sat away the multitude. He sent away the multitude and took ship and came into the coast of Magdalena. But what I wanted to realize is after you do ministry, you should feed the people too. It's a shame to be in the ministry and they never have a pantry. Or they never have a food outing or something like that. We are here to feed people information, but substance as well, so they may live as well, right? He said he taught the people for a while. But he said they, he'd seen them hungry, so he fed them. Our job is to feed people as well. So we got, what, I'm, what he's saying is the Sunday school that as members, our job is to go out and make sure people have something. So if somebody come here and say they're hungry, you should not say go away. You should be able to say, okay, let's see what we can work on. Let me see, I got some of this, I got some of this, let's go buy some food. Or let them know about the pantry. Right? But what I'm saying is that so many people that's having ministries are not having no substance outside of church. And this is what Jesus is showing us an example. An example that we should be like him. And we should be able to feed a multitude. How? With faith. Believe in God. And this is where we get to the sermon for this afternoon. It's called the glory of God. Amen? And many of you want to know what, was, what is the glory of God. And the glory of God is the ability to feed a multitude. The glory of God is the ability to feed four to five thousand people. The, the glory of God is the ability to explain the word of God in a very uh, understanding manner. That's the glory of God. Because the glory of God will come and let you have a, 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 a discerning way of speaking to where it is shaped for just that individual as well as the next individual. And that's the glory of God. So when we speak about the glory of God, we're speaking about all the attributes pertaining to Jesus Christ. And we're not hearing that in church. You go to a church, you say, what is the glory of God? They don't know. And it's sad because the glory of God is in signs and wonders. The things that he do in the church is his glory. So to be able to tell people about him is having the glory of being able to show people 
how to get substances is the glory of God. The glory of God is to do what he did. To make people, how would you say, astonished. You know, surprised. You know, excited. Like, wow, really? All this stuff for free? You mean this man just talked to us about how to live holy and then you're gonna and then you're gonna feed us on, you know, how to say, you know, fed, not hungry. And he said they went away not hungry and they had extra. <laughs> It, 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 wouldn't it be a shame to run out of food? <laughs> and you're having a party or a ministry thing going? Remember what happened with Jesus when they ran out of wine? Right? What did they have when they eat that? Let's make some more. We can't run out of nothing when I'm around. And if you're in the house of the Lord, you can't run out of nothing. You need to have enough to overflow. They need to run over because that's the glory of God. The glory of God is not in a little bit. It's in the overflow. So if you have the glory of God in your church and you're not overflowing in substances, then something's wrong with that glory. Because the glory of God expands things. It makes things bigger. It makes more of less. So your education in church should be more, not less. You're, you should be able to, to discern more of the scripture than the average person because you have the glory of God inside you. So the glory of God should reveal to you what others don't know if you're in charge, if you're in leadership. And that's what he's saying here. If you look at the whole scripture, he said he asked his disciples, and this is another thing we haven't been taught, that they had money. If you, if you look at it, the disciples said, we have this much money. How are we going to buy enough bread for all the people that are feeding work? So they had money. And then you have some people say, you shouldn't have money. No. You got to have money to buy stuff for the congregation to have food. So he said, we, he said it, and I think it was in, in, in the other of Episcopal, like John or Luke. He said, we have this much money. How could we buy uh, uh, so much? And then he said, what, what did the kid have? And then he took the little uh, loaves and fishes and, and broke them and, 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 and fed the most of them. But they had money to buy. Because they because Peter did ask them, should we go buy with this little bit that we have? So this is another thing. They in the wilderness, they out there teaching, and they had money. So deny yourself and pick up my cross and follow me does not mean you, 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 you deny yourself finance. Right? Some places will tell you, come to the church and give me all your money if you want to be holy. If you want to be saved, give me everything. Pour out all your blessings and give it to me. That's what they do. And that's not true. That's not how uh, you fulfill the will of God. Yeah, give some of yours, but don't give up everything. I had a pastor tell me they had people that talked to him and told him that they gave up their house, their car, gave it all to the church. Because they felt that's what the pastor was telling them. You know, give up everything. Leave house, leave mother, leave children and follow me. So they got everything. And that's not biblically sound doctrine. God wants you to leave your sin, but he don't want you to leave your substances. You don't have to serve a God by selling your house and your car and your money and, and being poor. Because he's poor, they say he was poor. He was poor and lonely in heart. He wasn't poor. If he was poor, why did he try to sell his garment? They cast lots for his garment. It must have been an expensive garment they want to want to cast it up. Somebody want to pay for it and buy it. He healed a rich man. Son, how could he be poor if he healed his son? They didn't give him an offering. You heal my son and I'm, not, and I'm rich and I'm not going to bless you? Of course they did. He went around doing so much good. You think he didn't get... Uh, head off. <laughs> Think about it in real terms. Here I am healing everybody, feeding 5,000. Then they want to hook up, hook me up. So why would he be poor? He could go anywhere and live. Then they say he had, that Jesus had nowhere to lay his head. <laughs> so he, he's, he's homeless. No, he wasn't homeless. He could have slept anywhere he wanted to. He just wanted to be comfortable with his Lord in the wilderness with God. Because you see, some people's houses, they have a piece of work. They make you lose your salvation. 
I'd rather stay over there. Amen. Stay over there in my car. Yeah. And be with my Jesus. Yeah. Right. Then be around a whole bunch of foolishness where I can't get to heaven from God what my ministry should be. But he had his own, he had his own places. He had places that remember and he needed a donkey. Well, he made a donkey. Oh, he made this room. I need this room. I need that. I need that. All they had to do was just say the word and they gave him what he wanted. So we can't be so naive to think that we're not supposed to have anything for ourselves, but we're supposed to have it in moderation. Just because you have it don't mean you're splurging. I mean, I understand you want to look good for a holiday. Fine. But every day a new suit, every day a new outfit, every day a new this, and then your church don't have nothing. Then the, 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 the tax collector come and want to order your church and say, what you got in the bank? Zero. Zero? A year of tithes and offering? And at the end of the year, you got zero? That don't make sense. But then when they look at your house, you got oh, a whole wardrobe, laundry, and everything in there. Like you're a Don, mafia done with the church money. Ain't working or nothing. My church. He, what they, this is the new thing they say in there. I've been called into full time ministry. The church got to take care of me. No. If you were called into full time ministry, you take care of the church. That's your ministry. The church shouldn't take care of you. You should take care of the church. You think Jesus had to ask you to take care of the church? No. You think Paul, Apostle, Peter, John? They didn't know. They worked and they taught. And each one teach one. Everyone help everyone. Listen to the Bible. He said everybody had in common. Everybody gave everybody what they need, so nobody needed nothing. If we could just get unity again, we'd be fine. It's no, it's not too much unity. Everybody want to grab from everybody and take from everybody, and it's just a piece of it's, it's just messy. Because they're not being taught how to get members, how to get people. Jesus gave us an example. This is Sunday school. I'm not preaching. I'm just giving a teaching on Sunday school. We have a good Sunday school. Jesus gave an example, right? Mm -hmm. He gave an example to the people. And he said, go in all ye lands and preach the gospel. But now we think all ye lands is each other's churches. <laughs> <laughs> and compel them to come. So they go into each other's churches and compel you to go to their church and leave your church. And this is what's going on. Everybody going there. Everybody going there. Everybody going there. Everybody going there. No. Like I go on, oh, I got a social media page. Like I go on a social media. I say it doesn't make no sense. You got five trillion million people in the street. And you got to go to somebody's church that got three and try to take their three little people. To come work for your church. So your rationale as a leader is, well... You only got three in your church. You need to come with me because I got ten in mind. Come with me. Instead of just going out to the deep and ministering to the people in the shelters and on the trains and in the, in the buildings and, and homeless and tell them about the goodness of Jesus and tell them they can come to your church and have a, you know, a meal and a word of God. And that's how you pray for me. You don't go to somebody else's church and take their members. You don't go to some other church and say, God told me to tell you to come here so I can take your members. Or God told me to tell you to come here so I can take your church. And then you got the audacity to ask that leader to come to your church and see your congregation. And then 15 people in your congregation is from his church. But you tell her to come to your church to see what you've done. Not talking about nothing. I mean, this is real. My, I had a pastor. That, his name, I tell you his name, the pastor Brian up further that. He taught me this stuff. It happened to him. It happened. People leave the church and want to start their own church, and then they want to take everybody he got in his church. And really, he's on me. Really? No. When God called you, you should go out there and be fishers of men out there, not in somebody else's church. But they're not teaching them that. They say, all right, we're going to ordain you. You're going to go to open church. And this is how you get people. You go to churches that are already established and go there, sit there, talk in their ear, and take their members. Tell them something good and nice <clears throat> so they can come to your church. Or bribe them with some money. 
Girl, I buy you a new outfit. You just come to my search. That's how they do. <clears throat> because they no, because they don't have no power to go out and get people from where God sent them to. He said, go into all these lands and compel them to come. He didn't say go into everybody's church and take their members. He didn't say go into everybody's church and compel them to come to your church. Or copy their church. People preaching and teach, not teaching and stuff. Because this is what's going on. You remember what I'm sharing with you? They said a whole bunch of pastors, bishops just left the Catholic church. A falling away. They said a whole community of bishops just moved out. Resigning. Too much scandal. Too much problems. And everybody happy? People glad? Yay! We win! You ain't even win. You just destroyed a whole bunch of bishops that don't want to be in the news media or scandalized. Now you call yourself winning. No, the, the, the devil just used you to make accusations to destroy God's church. To where everybody is discouraged now. I ain't afraid. They ain't giving me no money from the government. They ain't gonna close me down. I can tell you. I talk what the God tell me to talk. And it's a shame. I understand the movements that's going on. But these movements are doing more damage than good. And it's hurting good people for no reason. The reason is because the devil thinks you could do that, want to show you to do it this way, and you grab hold to it and think you're doing something right, but you're really just destroying the ministry that God built. I ain't never seen so many lawsuits against the body of Christ. Everybody want to sue the church. Sue the pastor, sue the bishop. Why sue the church? The same pastor that prayed for you, the same pastor that laid hands for your family, the same pastor that helped you get that job, the same pastor that helped you get that apartment, now you want to go and sue them. We couldn't just work it out. We couldn't just reason together, take it to the Lord and pray. It says in Corinthians, anyone have ought, take it to the elders and the leaders of the church and work it out. Don't take it into the judge, which is unjust and unholy, because they don't understand. You're going to go before an unjust, unholy, non-saved person and go and say, well, this anointed person. Maybe this and that, they did that, maybe. Why do you know this Lord of God and let God handle it? That's what the Bible says. We handle our matters internally. That's right. But everybody wants to run out internally to the social media so they can get 100 likes, 5,000 likes, a million YouTube likes. But now you're destroyed the whole church. Now everybody that got healed and delivered can't go there no more because it's closed down and you're happy because you got 100 likes. These are the things people need to be preaching about, teaching about. Go out on the street and tell them, stop the foolishness. Amen, amen. Stop it. Go to God in prayer. They don't pray no more. They go to the government. Yes. And all the government want to do is destroy the churches. The government don't want to help the church. They want to destroy the church. So you give them ammunition by telling on the church. Let the devil use you the foolishness. And nobody want to say it because they're afraid they don't have no members. If, you ain't, if you're afraid in something wrong with your ministry, you ain't called by God. You're not called by God. If you don't stand like my chief apostle Gladys do, they would say flat-footed, unmovable, telling the word of God like it should be told, then you don't need to be in ministry. You should not be scared to bite your tongue. Because it's true. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They don't have the knowledge because those that have it aren't sharing it and those that are sharing it don't even have it. Good great. <laughs> they sharing something they don't have. Excuse me. Or don't even understand. That's the worst part about it. Is that many people come to church and don't want to be real. You know, everything got to be a facade. Everything got to be like a royalty thing. 
I'm great too when I get up there. I'm gallant while I'm down here. I don't want people to put me on a pedestal. Reward me in secret. The Lord said, He'll reward me openly. I don't need you to reward me on a pedestal. My glory is in heaven from God. I'm feeling the spirit now. I'm not preaching. But my glory is in heaven from God. I don't need your glory down here. That's why they look at me and say, you're not like other church, other bishops. You're, uh, you're different. You're unorthodox. You're not proper. Oh, well. Amen. Amen. Apostle Paul wasn't either. Amen. They thought he was crazy. <laughs> How you going to drink water in the pulpit preaching, teaching? That's not normal to some. But it's righteous for me because I'm real. I'm thirsty. Not a few. I was standing in choke instead of drinking the water. <laughs> Come and sit. Take a minute. Smile. Yeah, your face will break. That would be so. My God. This is good. This is the glory of God. So the glory of God is the ability to make some extraordinary happens. You got that? The glory of God is the ability to make something extraordinary happens. We're going to preach on that later, but that's what it is, because, and I'm going to get into the sermon a little bit about it, but, 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 but when they were going, every time they came, they were glorified by what the Ark of the Covenant would do. That and they were like, wow! So that's the glory. So if, if the glory of God goes to that uh, engagement Saturday, there should be a, 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 a wow moment in there. And I guarantee you, everywhere we go, if you say Bishop Bishop and the glory of God, they're going to recognize that power. Jesus. They do. Everywhere you go, they know the power. They know me. They see me. They see God. They know God. They know the anointing. I ain't even got to go there. They know because they can feel it. Mm. That name alone is powerful. Feel the name. Go ahead now, Jesus. Because we worked in that name. We represent that name. So when you get, the, I'm not getting it myself. You get to understand of the glory of God. You go there with authority and say, "I am the glory of God." You got to recognize the glory of God. My power is in my name. Come on, somebody. Not in my. That's why we learn when we was younger. Um, be careful what you name your children because that name is important. And now our name of the church is the glory of God. Be careful. Because that's the name. That name is powerful. Every time you say Jesus powerful, then it's happening, right? Yeah. So every time you say glory, something's going to happen. Every time you say God, something's going to happen. Every time you say anointed, something's going to happen. So those words itself are powerful to say. So when you go and say, I represent the glory of God, whoa! That's the action behind the glory of God. It's a whoa, the glory of God. Really? That's how it should be. Wow, the glory of God. But if you don't understand the magnificent of the word, then you are at a defeat of how powerful you are really. You're really that powerful because of that one name and that covenant. I'm going to get into that later in the sermon. But the ark of the covenant, the glory is inside it. And you're in that up, man. Listen, once that open, you're part of that. You're part of that. That's powerful to be part of the glory, the part of the ark. You know, and this is all going into the multitude feeding. Because of, and I'm, I'm going to share with y'all, Jesus is the ark of the covenant. So that's why he can do that wow moment. Because he is the wow so when he did that breaking of the five loaves and fishes, it was a wow moment because he is the ark. So he just showed the glory of God. He broke and gave thanks and the glory just appeared to where everybody was eating. So when they carried the ark, they were carrying Jesus, but that's what it's afternoon. People don't know that. People don't know that Jesus was in that ark. People don't know that. The ark of the covenant is that. Not the, not the ship Noah's ark, but the covenant ark that they didn't carry. I'm gonna get into that later. But this is important to realize. So, so, so the glory of God is in the the showing 
of the power of God. You can't have the glory of God and not show nothing. Then you're a fraud and a perpetrator. Because we got a lot of mockers that are not powerful in the glory of God, but they want to say that name. But they are not of us. They're not from us. They're from us, but not of us. Because they were of us, they would have stayed with us. So this is what I'm saying with this. After a while, when you disconnect from the glory, and the longer you disconnect, the less glory power you got anymore. I'm just saying. So you're running on fumes after a few months, and then when the fumes is over with, if you ain't back connected, you lost. And the glory is not going to find you. You need to find the glory again. Jesus. People need to find the glory again. And this is what God is saying to the churches. His glory has left so many. And they are trying to find it again. People are just not, the glory is just not dead. It's just not dead. Why? Because they lost it. They no longer connected to whatever it was that had them. The source of the glory. We'll talk about that later, but the, the, the order. You notice, whenever I'm doing certain, like a whole month series, people, certain people just start to disappear. Mm -hmm. people, some people just don't, always somebody just doesn't come to the teachings because it's, it's like, for some reason, always. It happened with the other people that used to be at our church. They were staff, you know, maybe yeah. they, yeah. they would not come at certain times. When I'm saying I'm doing a series, they wouldn't show up because, because I don't know, the, the, the power of knowledge is key. And listen to what God is saying to the church. So many people in the church don't want the power because they don't want to be responsible for the outcome. Right. So you are without an excuse because now you heard the power. And you know what the glory is. So if you don't use it, you can't say you didn't know about it. So they don't want to come because they don't want to be responsible. The devil in them don't want to come because the devil in them keeps them from the connection. Because what's going on now is if you have a bishop saying he's going to teach on the glory of God all month of May and you're too a part of the ministry and you're not there to learn that's just stupid. But then a, a month later, you're going to be, yeah, that's my leader. That's my covering. That's my this. That's my that. But you're not in his church to learn when he's teaching. Jesus, my God. So what is he really to you? It was a right to be in the church to learn and be taught before the papers. Now, after the papers, I'm not going to go and be taught no more. Because oh, now I got the paper, I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm all right. You need to still sit and be taught on the next movement of the Spirit of God in your ministry. Because it comes through that. Mm -hmm. The next step won't go without permission from us. The same person that talked to God on your behalf when you start is the same person talking to God on your behalf during the whole entire. They didn't just, God didn't just cut them off, the person off. The leader will always be the leader that started the thing. And if you don't go back when they, man, please, when people are at a disadvantage, because, and this is not because they don't know. They know. They were taught. They just were blinded by people they met. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you blinded by people you met, you make wrong decisions because you're looking at the bigger people, the bigger people, the bigger picture, the bigger people. But you're not looking at the real deal yeah. because it's a mirage. So you got these other pastors and bishops and teachers and apostles. They come in and they telling you, oh, your church is this, and look at this church, and look at what you're doing, and do it this way, and do it that way. And you never ask the one that started, because now that person is obsolete. Yeah. Because you done met uh, Arch, Chief Chief this one, and Extra Arch this one, and Apostle Apostle Extra Apostle this one, and that one, and now they telling you this, 
that, oh yeah, but I don't need my beginning anymore. I don't need my grassroots anymore. I don't need my foundation anymore because I, I connected to all these other people, which is what the devil does. He blinds you and makes you connect to other things to make you separated from the glory of God. And like I said, the glory of God is not going after you. And if you keep it up, you might not never find it to get back. This is why it's not good to burn bridges. Because you're going to have to go back to that bridge. I guarantee you, it'll be 10 years later, you're going to have a situation in court or somewhere where that bridge is going to say, I need to see the person. Or I need to hear from the person. Or I need more documents from that person. Spirit have your way. Jesus Christ. But because you don't like how the person flow or how the person move, you disconnect from the main connector, mm -hmm. which is sin. That's like the devil spirit. I'll be better than the most high God. Jesus. I'm going to be a ruler of my own ministry. I'm going to do my own thing. I'm going to do better than him. That's just like the devil. That's what he said. I want to be better than my own God. I want to be the better than the chief God. I want to rule the world. And that's what so many people do when they leave them, their churches. They want to do better. No. Work together. Work together. And I learned this. You know, you work together. And if they ask for help, help them. If they work here, work together. Don't just disappear because you got yours. You know? Mm -hmm. David slayed his 5,000 soul, his 2,000. But if Saul would have ever asked David for help, David would have helped him. That's right. Even when Saul don't ask, David still would help him. Because he loved who helped him start. He would meet with him. That's why he said he would not kill uh, David's family, Saul's family. He would not destroy them because he know where they started from. You don't destroy those that help you along the way. You don't destroy those that started with you. It was in his house. It was in Saul's house. He ate, slept, and met. It was in this house that you ate, slept, and met. In this house. Amen, amen. Yes, Lord. All the connections came out of this house. And now you out talking how bad the house is. How small the house is. How messed up the house is. Who bewitched you to believe such a lie? Who be wishing to turn from sound doctrine to false doctrine? Who stopped you from seeing the glory of God as it is? You know, I don't even pray it no more. I used to pray God keep the scales off of their eyes so they can see the glory for who it really is because that's what happens. Satan blinds you with those scales on it. I don't even pray to even remove it because you shouldn't let them put it back on. You're seeing it right, but you let them put it back on. Why? Because you're envy? Because you got a, a bold spirit in you that you want to do better than? Look better than? Act better than? Be better than? And you ain't. Because you're still messed up for one reason. You're not with the leader that you started with. Always be with the leader that started you. Connect somehow, call. Go out and eat. Talk. Visit. Learn. Ask questions even if you know the answer. <laughs> just the communication part is important. I might know the answer, but just to be able to say something to you. I do it on my job all the time. I know how to do certain things in Microsoft Office, but if you want to show me because you're my boy, show me. I ain't gonna say I know already. No, 
Let my boys feel like they, yeah, I can't teach me, even though I know. Just because you know, don't mean you don't work it together like, you know, you might learn something different. I got this somewhere, I know how to do this. No, just show me again. Oh, okay, so that's how, okay, yeah. Even though you know, you let them teach you. Because they want to do something for you. You can't stop people from doing stuff for you. <laughs> it's funny how they come for the bread pan with shopping carts and big duffel sack bags. Duffel bags to garbage club. <laughs> At least we're able to feed the multitude. Because remember this. Now we've been doing pantry for what, six years, seven years now. So imagine seven years of pantry. The people that come and their children and their grandchildren and the other children that they're feeding through the pantry adds up to more than 5,000 after seven years. So we feed them more than just a multitude during our lifespan of the world to come. Because if you look at it, he said the children as well. Women and children. 4,000 not counting women and children. So they took it in fact the children and women, and they took it in fact their children and women. So, you know, that alone is what's keeping the glory alive. Because we're doing something with it. Who wouldn't want to be a part of that? Who wouldn't? That was 15, right? We're still in Sunday school. We've got a few more minutes. What he said there? And he took the seven loaves and the fishes and gave things and break them and gave to his disciples and the disciples of the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled and they took up of the broken meat that was left seven baskets full. And they had they did eat with four thousand men besides women and children. So that's a lot of people. That's four thousand already. Plus their children and their wives. So that's 4,000 wives. Plus their children. Everybody has children. That's 4,000. That's like 1,200, 12,000 people. And we're doing that. Out of seven years, we did that. Thank you, Because we have a lot of stuff to do. And they're giving neighbors, not just friends and family and wives. They're giving neighbors too. So we're giving neighbors as well. So this is revelation that the church has done. So we're going to have powerful rewards. And then Matthew 14, we're closing. I said the month of May is going to be teaching. So we're doing a lot of teaching this month. A lot of information this month. I know what they say is Pentecostal Sunday, which is good. We're teaching. This month. We're not like other than any other church. They want to show. We don't need to show for many or something. God moves his way. We don't move the same every year. Come on. Every year he's doing the same thing. No. 1413. This is another version of it. And when Jesus heard of it, he departed this by his trip into a desert. Place apart. And when the people have, had heard thereof, they followed them on foot out of the cities. And Jesus went forth and saw a great multitude and it was moved with compassion toward them. So he not only fed them, but he healed the sick. Mm. And when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, This is a desert place, and the time is now past. Send the multitudes away, that they may go into the villages and buy themselves victuals. Food. And Jesus said unto them, They need not depart, give ye them to eat. 
And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. He said, Bring them five loaves and two fishes unto me. And he commanded the disciples, the multitude, to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and break and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they all did eat and were filled. And they took up fragments that were made. This one says 12 baskets. Everybody see it different. And they had eaten were well, about 5,000. Or this was the second time this happened. Because the first time, 4,000, this time, 5,000, so it might have been two different occasions where Jesus made these miracles. It could be two different occasions. Because this occasion is after he got off the boat. The other one was before he did it and left and got on the ship. So this is saying something here that the glory of God is always doing miracles. So you can write that down. The glory of God heals the sick. Oh, why? Yeah. yeah. The glory of God heals the sick. Thank you, Lord. And it happens in this church. The glory of God has healed many sick, yeah. homeless, hungry, fed, got housing, clothes, have got out. Why? Because the glory of God is in the place. We told the young lady, come back again. She came twice and got her apartment. Amen. That's right. Came and said, you know I got my promises I've been here. Yeah. Acts and you shall receive it. Listen and do what thus saith the Lord. You get it. You get it. But that's what we wanted to let everybody realize. Teaching is important for growth. People just don't know sometimes. And then you go in church and you say, what do you learn? Nothing. I learned how to shout. I learned how to scream. I learned how to shout. But I didn't learn how to pay my bills. I didn't learn how to tie and learn that if I give, I get back. I didn't learn that, you know, I could feed a multitude by feeding my family and their family. I didn't know I could, you know, uh, show the glory of God at other places by a wild moment, you know? And then it's a, this is another example of the glory of God, your testimony. I'm going to share this. I was at my job and I shared a little bit about a little bit about my history, my life. And they were like, wow! Yeah, 25 years clean and sober. That's a wow moment. That ain't nothing but the glory of God to be 25 years with no substances. Not even a cigarette. That's the glory of God. To be able to say that and stand flat footed, honestly, the truth. All old things are passed away, the whole all things become new. Who wouldn't listen to someone like that? We are listening to everybody that that's, you know, here you got a pastor. You trying to stop smoking. So you go to that pastor for counsel, and he said they're smoking. That's stupid. But they do that. Yeah. I'm coming to you because I want to learn how to stop smoking. And I'm sitting there smoking somebody. Yeah, this is how you do it. Uh, I guess you pray. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> pay your tithes. You know, you got to do that. <laughs> but they still smoking. I'm saying, you got to be able to have control of yourself before you go have control in the church. Right. You're not an example. Oh, I would have just been real and say, well, look, I'm struggling, I'm struggling with the same thing. So maybe we both can find out how to stop smoking. Because I'm a pastor, but I'm still smoking. Yes. Instead of you hiding and lying and making yourself look better than them, when you just as bad or worse, at least they gave it, they know what they're doing. You doing it and ain't telling them because you don't know it's wrong. I'm serious. This is what's really happening. People are actually lying that they don't do what they know they do just to get you thinking they better. Amen. And they ain't healed the lick. They ain't healed the lick. They ain't got nothing. Just miserable. 
but they are trying to make you feel they ain't. No, do some homework. It's all right to do some homework. Snoop around and see what that pastor really is. Snoop around and see if they really got what they say they got. Snoop around and see what they really doing. If the job do a credit check, you do a credit check on your pastor. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, you need to. I mean, come on. I want to know. It'll be a shame I'm living in, I'm doing church with a pastor for five years and I ain't never know he was a murderer killing people and spitting on people. That's right. That's true. And then they come and lock up everybody in the church. You didn't know why. I didn't do homework. I didn't search them out. You have a right to know what they do. If I'm going to follow you, I need to make sure I know who I'm following. That's right. Don't just follow anybody. Don't just listen to anybody just because they say, Lord, Lord, don't mean they really Lord. That's right. I've seen some Jake Blake preachers. I don't mess with them people. That's how you do it. No, they didn't call me back to preach after I found out. I sat there and that pastor was sitting there and I preached right there and I knew what he was doing. I preached it and they were hot. And they were, if they were over there, they would have been red all in the face. You could probably see the red through the black. <laughs> they were red because that's what people do. You remember the, 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 the sermon on the, 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 the fourth prophet teacher? The fourth prophet, how they have people come to the front with crutches? Yeah. They ain't sick. But they have them come looking sick and have them sit there and then they pray with them. They jump up and drop the crutches. <laughs> All right. They jump up and drop the crutches and you feel like they really did something. And then you go, oh yeah, give them an offering. Like, yeah, it's a good church. They help them. It's all a scam. It is. This is scary. Hey, no way you tell me 50 people dropping crutches. And here you is and got three airplanes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and after the church is over, they in the back of Where my cup? Where my cup? Where my cup? And this is what's really happening. Yeah. People are making a mockery because they think that's how they can get rich. And then the minute they get the big offer, they get all the money because they put that foolishness. And then you look behind the scenes and say, wait a minute. That person down there walking without a cane anyway. Before they got into church, they were bopping. She coming out of a Bentley. But they got to keep paying for that Bentley. So they got to like wrap up their legs. <laughs> sit in the front. And then I'm wrapping like, oh, wow, look, look, look. And was never hurt. But they want to pay for that bit they got. <laughs> then they say, so is the good ground. Look, so is the good ground. Ain't nothing good about it. They're all scared. Then they be back in that church. That was a small church, but the big ones are going to come about. They don't want to hear me. I go there and tell them the truth. The just say of the Lord, cut the fool of this out. People sell their soul for the devil for money. It's just stupid. Yes, it's really disgusting. Yes, yes. I don't know why, why they don't fall and hurt themselves praying to God. It's wrong. It is. But this is what's really going on. And I don't mind talking about it. Because we don't do that. We don't need to. I work hard for my life. And everything goes to my church. Ain't no way you're going to get a ministry and not put into it. Mm. I don't look for other people to take care of this church. You got to be out your mind. I'm just like uh, 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 Abraham. I don't want nobody saying they did anything for the glory of God. You ain't got one person out there and this is going to allow on YouTube and all the social media. Now, one of you out there can say you have to anything to keep this. That's right. Or God. I ain't asking. He makes a way. And I have put up my own rent to keep mine. God happy. And he'll never let you down. Never. Never let you down. So remember that when you, you know when you when you think about teaching somebody something, teach them what you just learned today. The glory of God is in your praise. The glory of God is in your power. The glory of God is in your wow moment. If you ever get a real wow moment, and they say, "Why you did that?" Say that's the glory of God. Being able to get delivered from substances—that's a wow. And stay that way. Get healed from sicknesses. And this is wow. That's the glory of God to be able to tell somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
but the Lord has done for you. Hallelujah. In sincerity. Now we ain't doing it, don't lie. Amen. Too many liars out there. I don't need people coming. We have two other people coming here that fake testimony. I know they lying. There ain't no way God did all that. Lying looking something. Just want to test a lot. But they look good. They ain't got nothing. Lying. Don't lie in your testimony. If God didn't do it, he didn't do it. Just leave it alone. You don't have to make some extraordinary testimony because everybody else got one. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, come on. If you don't have one, you have one. Just have a real testimony. I'm great God. He woke me up this morning and I'm here today. That's a good testimony. You have to say, thank hey, God, it was one. I got eight jobs and four raises and then I got 18 bank accounts and you're loving them. Don't say all that. It, it don't impress nobody. It doesn't impress people. And they have some that just lie. Yeah. Especially these leaders. They lie in a minute just to have them swimming and thinking they got all this and they ain't got nothing. Taking advantage of people. So that was our Sunday school. I hope you like it. Okay? Yeah. Because this is different. We are unique and different. Amen? Yeah. All right. Sunday school, friend. Four servants.